Yo, Elliot, my question is about hierarchy. Do I say that right? Hierarchy? Hierarchy at work. I do not have a path for a non-job yet, so for now I'm working commercial construction. I've had bosses that I've worked for that seem to try to hold me back from succeeding too much. It seems like some supervisors are too insecure to risk their subordinates gaining more knowledge and skill than them. Where do you think a line should be drawn for respect of the hierarchy and respect for self? This reminds me of uh, the book, I think it was in Ma the book Mastery by Robert Greene. And of course, you know, the book is all about being an apprentice and learning your skills so that you become great at your job. And then ultimately, you know, they say 10,000 hours to become a master. The whole book is about the stories of men that became masters, right? And... Then at the end of every chapter, he points out like what they did right, what they did wrong. And one of the chapters is about Benjamin Franklin. He talks about Benjamin Franklin. And there are things about Benjamin Franklin I didn't, I didn't know, right? The public schools didn't teach me everything about him. But Benjamin Franklin was in a very similar situation as you, where he worked at for a printing press, I believe it was, right? He, or something like that, he, like a newspaper, right? And he was the low guy on the totem pole. You got to listen to the story, like watch it, or you can listen to it on Audible or read the book. So fascinating. He was the low man on the totem pole, and he recognized that the people above him were constantly trying to sabotage him. Right? He was like, why are they? Because he was smart. He was probably smarter than the rest of them. He was ambitious. And he really just wanted to do a good job. And whenever he went out of his way to do extra stuff, the guys would, like, sabotage him. They would, like, put something in his way to screw him up or, like, knock him off or, like, Set, you know, give him bad information so that he wouldn't get what he what he, what he needs. And so he, and when he was young, so he learned his lesson. When he was young, that's the way he operated. As he got older, he started to recognize that when you're working in a place of hierarchy like that, it's better not to try to shine too bright too soon and to follow their ways. So one of the examples he gives in that story is like all the guys at the printing press or, you know, after work, they would go out and they would get drunk. They would go to the bar. But Benjamin was like, no, I ain't doing that. Right? He thought he was being dignified. He thought he was being, you know, like, hey, man, I really want to succeed this job. I'm going to go out there and get drunk with you guys every day. Well, literally, he realized that by him not going out there and doing what they do, not following their rules, being a part of their culture, even if it's just to pretend, right? He could legitimately just go on there and, and sipped on one beer, right? Instead, he was being arrogant. He was trying to be, you know, tough guy and trying to, like, lead. So what he discovered was now, and then what he did was he worked somewhere else, and he was, like, learning from that lesson where they all try to sabotage me because I was trying to be too good too soon too fast. He says, I'm just going to sit back and watch the office politics. And then he, that's how he became sort of a manipulator of people. He started to watch, you know, okay, I got to know who's in charge, who's not. And he, he decided that the more quiet he was, the better, right? Don't try to strive and reach and, and try to dominate or try to be better than anybody, right? He says, just sit quietly and watch. And he says, you got to watch, you got to watch, you got to be on everybody's good side. And that way you kind of, they, you know, when you're on everybody's good side, they tell you things. You see things that like they would probably be a little bit more nervous around a, a, a do-gooder or somebody who's trying to climb the ladder too fast, like, yo, don't, don't talk to that guy right there. He's trying too hard, right? And this is what it's like when you work in unions and shit like that, right? They don't like when somebody's working too hard. If you try to work too hard, they're not going to like you. So he discovered that if I lay back and wait and chill and listen and just kind of be invisible but work and try to be on everybody's good side, he gathered more information, more intel, and when it was time for him to make a certain strategic move, it could be much more precise, much more precision. And so I'm just I'm sharing that story with you as a means to uh, give you some hope, but also point you in a direction. You got to listen to the story. I believe it's in Mastery, uh, Robert Greene. And understand that there, there are rules of engagement when you're working in organizations. And that was one of the, the main things that was trying to be relayed in that story was and you can't be too eccentric right away. You can't be too ambitious right away. You can't show your cards like they're going to know. Like this guy trying to, you know, they could lose their job. They don't want to lose their job to you, bro. So you got to act like, oh, I'm just like a dummy, right? And I'm just, uh, just kind of 
quiet guy and just do what I'm told. But on the low, you watching and you plotting and you paying attention. And the moment an, an opportunity arises for you to step in and make your move, boom, it's like a stealth, like stealth in the night. Nobody saw it coming, right? Mm -hmm. Law number three, Paul reminds us, conceal your intentions. Conceal your intentions. <laughs> That's how that sounds in the audio book. Law three, conceal your intentions. You gotta conceal your intentions, right? You try to get too much knowledge. You try to climb too high too soon. Let them be in their hierarchy. Let them sit fat in their place and you just watch and you just listen. And there's gonna be, a, there's gonna be an opening and you're gonna right in there. And they're all going to be like, what the hell just happened? How'd this guy become our boss? Mm. Bunch of knuckleheads. So that's it, dude. That's my advice on that. Study that. Study that chapter. In, in, uh, I think it's mastery or it's the power. It might be um, strategies. Uh, oh, no, um, power. What was it? Four, 42 laws of power. Something like that. 48, 48 laws of power. Yeah. Study that. You should study. I think everybody should study all of Robert Greene's books. I'm, I've been talking about it a little bit more to, today because I'm referring to some of his books. But those books, you will learn more about human nature reading those books than you would by watching people walking around in the mall. You'll learn a whole lot. So I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.